starting the ketogenic diet and how other people might be able to lose weight and improve their health and regain control of their lives. So welcome. I hope everyone is doing well. And please, if anyone does come online, if you can let me know that you can hear me. Um, it's always a question, you know. Can someone let me know if they can hear me? I would appreciate that. Looks like some... Oh, hello, Cuckoo. Cuckoo's a little slow. Okay, well, I'm going to keep on talking as if people can hear me. Please let me know if you can't. Oh, somebody just did a little thing. So, hey, Karen, I'm going to guess that you can. Good. I don't see any comments. So, there we go. Okay, good, good, good. Good. That done. Every week is a, is a technology adventure. So, today, this is not a new topic, but it continues to be one that is asked frequently. How much should I eat? How much can I eat? How much do I have to eat? when following the ketogenic diet. Quick background, the ketogenic diet is one where you reduce your carbohydrate intake to a point where your liver does not pump out glucose for fuel and then your body happily switches to burning ketones or fat for fuel. That's pretty much it in a nutshell, as it were. Uh, nuts, not on the food list, by the way. So how do you get there? For most people, pretty standardized, pretty much guaranteed to work is if you keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 total grams per day or fewer, not net, total. Eat fatty sources of protein, and that just means eat the fat that comes with your protein. Eat the poultry with the skin. Eat the ribeye with the fat. Eat the pork chop with the fat. Eat chuck roast instead of filet mignon. Eat eggs with the yolks. Um, eat full fat dairy if you can tolerate it. Not whole milk. That has lactose in it, which is sugar. But anyway, eat the fat that comes with the protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. And stop when you're satiated. Not stop when you're stuffed, but stop when you're satiated. That's the protocol pretty much there. Now, you'll note that um, there's no mention of how much protein or how much fat or how many calories to eat. While ultimately calories are important if you are over-consuming fuel in relation to your body's energy requirements, that's probably going to lead to disappointment as far as the scale goes and your waistline and how many chins you have. But the beauty of a well-formulated ketogenic diet is that not only is it healthful and satiating and nutritious, it's a natural appetite suppressant you just end up eating less food. It's fantastic. Um, so, so, let's repeat again. 20 grams of carbohydrate or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. And stop when you're satiated. So, this can be repeated many, 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 many times, and I've repeated it many, many, many times, and y'all have probably repeated it to other people many, many times. And I'm not the only one saying this. And then someone can hear it many, many times. And the next question will be, how much protein should I eat? I have no idea. There was just um, um, an episode of the People's Pharmacy on NPR this morning, 7 a.m., with Dr. Christopher, oh, I knew I was going to forget his name. I know his name. It'll come back to me. Someone, someone out there knows it, from Stanford University. And he did their, they did a study on low-fat versus low-carb. Gardner, Christopher Gardner. Thank you, brain. Um, and essentially called it a, a null study. They, they found out that there wasn't really a great amount of difference as far as 
weight loss or anything else, but they were really checking for, as I understood the description of the study, for metabolic or genetic factors that would go into whether low fat or low carb is better for you. And they found that there wasn't anything that they could see. It was 300 plus women for, I can't remember how long, six months, eight months, I don't recall, a year, I don't recall. Now, at the end of it, he said, that, you know, essentially just find whatever works for you because here's the dealio. We like to dig our heels in and become very incensed and very confused about nutrition, about eating. It's, it's the third rail. You know, don't talk about religion, politics, or diet around people because there's going to be a fight I don't know why. I don't know why anyone cares what anyone else eats. As far as health, their, that other person's health and happiness goes. So anywho, you can lose weight on a low-fat diet. Many people have done it. You can lose weight on Weight Watchers. You can lose weight on Move More, Eat Less. You can go to the gym, pump iron. You can just go on strictly calories in and calories out. If it works for you, great. Here's the, my experience, and this is truly all I can speak to, is my own experience and my understanding of what I've read and heard and been told. When you are following the way of eating, let's use low fat. How about move more, eat less? This will be an easy one. You move more, eat less. I'm going to move, 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 and not eat, not eat, not eat. If that works for you and you don't find yourself thinking about food and being hungry most of the time, great. When I've tried that, because I, I tried everything. For those of you who don't know, I used to be perfectly round. I'm actually 115 and a half pounds off my heaviest weight. And I'm 5'1", so perfectly round. Um, I tried, as most people have, many ways, and I and, and move more or less did seem logical. So I tried it. All I was hungry all the time. I was uncomfortable all the time, and I thought about food all the time, and I didn't lose much weight, if any. With the ketogenic diet, once you start burning fat for fuel, for me and for many people from whom I've heard and with whom I speak. It is an amazing thing when you realize you forgot to eat. It's 3 p.m. You have, you've had coffee or tea or, or your, you know, water all day. You've been busy. You forgot to eat. You didn't think about it. You're not hungry. A lot of people will contact me and say, I'm really concerned that I'm not eating enough. Are you functioning? Are you deliberately not eating? When you're actually quite hungry, no, I just don't feel like eating. Don't eat. Some days I eat more than others. Some days I eat barely anything. Some days I eat a gracious amount. It depends. Our bodies, you know, our bodies are not robots. They're fascinating, infuriating, complex organisms. And sometimes they're going to do what they want to do. But they know, our bodies know what it's doing. Listen to it. You know, when, when you touch a really hot plate and you go, ow, and you recoil and it hurts, your body's telling you something. Don't touch the hot plate, numb nuts. When you shiver, because it's cold and you're exposed to the elements, your body says, I'm shivering, put a coat on, please. Listen to your body. When your body says, I don't feel like eating, I am not hungry, don't eat. If your body says, okay, you better get some food in me right now, that's another thing. Don't confuse brain hunger. When you're, when you're burning sugar or glucose for fuel, your brain is gonna tell you about every two and a half or three hours to eat. There's a whole reason for that. I'm not gonna go into that today, because. I've explained my understanding of it many times. 
But that's why you can eat a large breakfast at 8 and at 10.30 you're roaming the halls looking for a cookie. You know intellectually you're not hungry. Your food is mostly still in your stomach. But your brain's telling you to eat. When you are burning fat for fuel, that same thing doesn't happen. Hunger is a very different thing. But you don't know day to day, hour to hour, how much you need to eat. Getting back to Christopher Gardner, Joe Graydon, host of the show, said, okay, there's a lot of talk about protein. So what is your understanding? And this, this is a well-credentialed guy, a researcher, a professor. How much protein should people eat? And he said, you know what? I'm so over the talk of protein. I don't know. Protein, we, we're getting plenty of protein. You're not at risk of eating too little protein. We're more at risk of eating too much protein if you concentrate on eating protein. He made an excellent point. You know, in, in food manufacturers, you know, it used to all be about eat this bar, it's low fat. Now it's eat this bar, it's high protein. 12 grams of protein. I don't need 12 grams of protein from a bar or a shake or a powder. You know, my, my luxurious breakfast and my lamb chops and the other food I eat, or I'm getting enough protein. Protein is generally self-regulating. I have no idea how many grams of protein I eat a day. Never have measured. Don't care. Guess why? Because it's not part of the protocol. Keep carbs, 20 grams or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein and don't eat if you're not hungry. What happens is if you eat the fat that comes with most animal products, the fat helps to satiate you. And the protein is something you need because you, you, need, you need protein to, you know, there are certain cells that require it and the nitrogen that is in it can only come from protein. But you're, don't overdo it and don't worry about it. When you start trying to shoot towards a minimum number, that's when people get in trouble. The next question, how am I going to get in all that fat? I don't like the idea of eating all that fat. Well, it's not all that fat. It's just the fat that comes with the protein. And if you don't eat when you're not hungry, you don't have to get in fat. You certainly don't have to eat 200 grams of fat a day. Illogical. It's nine grams, there's nine calories of energy in every gram of fat. 200 grams of fat is 1,800 calories. Can I tell you, I don't eat 1,800 calories a day of anything. If I did, I would put on weight. So, how much should you eat? Pretend we are pre-app. You know, don't let an app tell you what to eat. My fitness pal, when I did log my food, at the end of every day when I said, you know, complete today's entry, every day it told me I was going to be dead by sunrise. It didn't think I was eating enough food. Our bodies consume the energy needed. Combination of the food we put in our mouth and the stores of fat we have. When you're burning fat for fuel and the stores of fat that we have on us. It's fantastic. Think about it. That's how it works. And that's how we're designed. That's what fat stores are for, is to provide energy, onboard energy. So, how much should you eat? I don't know. How many calories? No idea. I don't know how many calories I eat a day. Dr. Stephen Finney went asked that, how many calories should one eat a day? He says, I, I don't know. And I wouldn't tell you if I did unless you were my twin or my clone. How can an app or a chart or a guideline say, or if you are a, a female of this age and this height, this is how much you should eat. There are a lot of variables in the human species. That is like an app telling you how many layers of clothing you should wear on a winter's day. Some people are naturally cold-blooded and they, they, you know, in summertime they walk around with a light sweater. Some people are naturally warm-blooded. Our older son prides himself 
on, I don't think he owns a coat. Okay? Don't let an app tell you what to do. Listen to your body. Our bodies are smart. Another way our body talks to us is when we are in pain. We are inflamed. Things hurt. That's your body saying there's something wrong here. This is not working. What you're doing is not working for me. When your blood sugar starts to go high, I'm sorry, distracted. I have new bird feeders. I'm so excited about my bird feeders. Right over there. Um, what was I saying? Oh, it'll come back. Jeez, this happens all the time. My poor, my, my patrons know this happens all the time. By the way, I want to give a plug for patrons and patreon.com. It is because of patrons, some of whom I know are here, that I can, that I, that I feel I can do this. I provide free content because I feel very blessed and gratified and feel like to whom much has been given, much is expected. And I, I want people to feel better as I have felt better. My life has changed for the better, dramatically. But patrons make it worthwhile, make it uh, possible. And we, and we have a community there, and oh gosh, patrons, you know what I'm about, you know what I'm looking at? There's a chipmunk, and you guys know what I'm talking about? We're having chipmunk Armageddon, Armageddon in our house, that's a whole other thing, sorry. Squirrel, okay. For that, there is patron-only content, everything from weekday videos to, uh, for me, sitting in my kitchen without makeup and without a coherent thought sometimes, to patron-only live streams, to patron-only group video chats, to one-on-ones, hour-long one-on-ones with me a month, depending on your pledge level. Okay, plug for Patreon, done. Done and dusted. So, I'm going to say again, how much should you eat? I have no idea. Listen to your body. Your body will tell you. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Stop when you're satiated. You don't have to keep eating until you're full. Many people with whom I speak say, I, I'm kind of digging this lightness, this internal lightness feeling. Instead of walking around all the time feeling you know, gross and bleh, it's like, whoa. You can lose inches without losing weight. Not a plug for Patreon, but on Patreon, We've got a plank thing going. And who knew that planks could be so effective? Helena, I don't know if Helena's here. She lost a half an inch on her waist in two and a half weeks just from doing planks. Her weight has not changed a bit. When she started out, she only do 20 seconds. Now she's up to a minute 42. I'm going to start doing it. Okay. Now, um, another thing I'm going to suggest, this is non-food related. My experience has been, once you start to feel better physically, and that can come long before any significant weight loss, by the way. I was a gradual loser. I was, I was not someone that would have posted my progress pics every week or month. It was gradual. I didn't care. I felt so much better almost immediately, within a couple of weeks, my joint pain resolved. It's gone, and it hasn't come back. My moods, totally non, non-chronic depression, which I experienced for a long time, um, got my brain back. I, I've often said I used to be really smart. And then in my 40s, it seemed like things were slipping away from me, and I got back to being smart again. And I do attribute it to the nutrition. Anywho, another thing that kind of comes along as you start to feel better is you want to do more. Things that maybe you used to do and you forgot you even ever liked doing them. Activities, big and small. You know, everything from puttering in the garden to getting back to running 5Ks, to maybe swimming, to maybe 
taking your dogs for walks when you started putting it off because you didn't feel good, you didn't have any energy. Blah. What's the point? To making time for reading a book. So as your life begins to change, your activities begin to change, and no pun intended, it feeds upon itself. It's fantastic. One of the changes I've implemented, this is, I, I, I understand fully the irony of what I'm about to say. I've just about stepped, well, I have. I've stepped away from Facebook some time ago. For one thing, I, I don't know that anyone who, who is within the sound of my voice would disagree that it's a huge time suck. You just, you literally get sucked into it. So unless my name is in the title of the group or the page, I don't look at it. I unjoined the very few groups I had joined. I don't look at anyone else's stuff. I don't even look at my own personal Facebook page. The reasons some people do is to, they say to keep up with their kids. My kids aren't on Facebook. Bless them. Smarties that they are. So, step away from the glowing screens. And I, I mean, if that means right now, you, you say, okay, that's what you said. Shut, shut this down. Don't listen. You don't need to hear me anymore. You certainly don't need to listen to cockamamie advice geared to selling you something on any topic. Do research. Use it as a tool. But Facebook's not really a great research tool. It's more a it's more of a self-promotion tool, mostly. I'm saying that fully aware of what I'm saying. Step away from social media. A lot of it is a crock. Full of fake, happy, shining, smiling people. And it can be very confusing. And it can be downright irritating. So... Make time in your life for other things. And make less time in your life for thinking about food. Stop thinking about food. Food is fuel. Food is not our savior. And I mean that small savior, not big savior. Food is not comfort, by the way. Comfort food is an oxymoron because those of us who have suffered with weight issues have found that when we so-call you know, comfort ourselves with food, we're torturing ourselves with food. And as we say around Go Keto with Casey, if hunger isn't the problem, food is not the solution. People say, I use food as a coping mechanism. I say, and I'm, I was perfectly round. I had all the issues that anybody else here has. If you're using food, by definition, you're not coping with whatever the problem is. You're avoiding coping with the problem. Right? Stop thinking about food so much. Stop talking about food so much. Quit asking how many grams of fat or protein should I have. Stop perseverating over how many calories you've eaten today. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer. That is, if in, you, in fewer, like, you know, two is fewer than 20. You don't have to have carbs. Uh, you know, it, it, you just don't. But if you're going to eat carbs, most of them are going to come from vegetables. How much is that? About the size of your fist of, or a cup of non-starchy vegetables prior to cooking. And about two fist sizes of leafy greens a day, max. You go over that, you're going to start getting over the 20 grains. Do what you like to do. Do what works for you. Do what makes you happy and healthy. But if you want to do this, a well-formulated ketogenic diet, the way that has been clinically proven 
to work for many people, not only for overweight, but for type 2 diabetes, do it. If you are a type 2 diabetic and on medications, please do this under a doctor's supervision. You must. Okay? Yeah, it's no joke. You must. To avoid having hypoglycemia. That's how effective the diet is. Your blood sugars can drop if you're on medications. So, um, here's my big advice for the day. Don't worry about how much you're eating. Listen to your body. Your bodies are smart. Even when people get to their goal weight, Karen is here. Karen is a professional keto person. And she's been at goal weight now for some time. And you don't add carbs back in when you get to goal weight. No, that's, no. You don't do that. Because, you know, if you're, if you, don't do well with carbs. You're going to put weight back on. My husband has been at goal weight after 17 hours of doing this diet. I mean, that's just the way he is. He doesn't add anything back in. He just follows his hunger. Some days he eats more. Some days he eats less. Some days he's on the bicycle for 25 or 30 miles. Some days he's riding the recliner, binge watching something with me. Follow your hunger your actual hunger, and step away from social media, honestly. Find, replace, replace a mindless, possibly not positive action in your life with a positive action. Maybe one, like I said, that you've forgotten that you love doing. Um, maybe one that you never considered doing. Regain control of your life. Do what you always thought you would do. When you were young, in your teens and 20s, you said, well, I'm going to be this person when I'm in, in charge of my day. Be that person. A lot of us lost that for different reasons. You know, life gets in the way. Responsibilities of caring for other people. But even if you're caring for other people, you can regain control of your life. If I can do this, I promise you, you can do it. I had given up, absolutely given up on ever losing weight. I just didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes, and I was this close. I come from a very large family, everybody with ultimately blood sugar issues, and I was on deck. So I promise you, if I can do this, you can do this. And how do you start? The next time you put food in your mouth, leave out the carbs. Have your meal. Just don't have an, leave off the bread and or the rice and or the potatoes. Because, you know, some of our meals are made up of rice, bread, potatoes, and corn. Leave all the carbs off. Eat the luxurious meats that you've been denying yourself. Pick the foods you like that are fatty sources of protein. You don't have to eat bacon if you don't like bacon. You don't have to eat an egg ever if you don't like eggs. You can have steak for breakfast. You can have chuck roast for breakfast. Make some baby back ribs. Just no sugar in the sauce. And have that for breakfast. Or don't eat breakfast. Um, very often I don't eat until late morning, early afternoon because I just, I'm not into it. Some days I have a big breakfast. My husband makes it for me. It's very sweet. Okay. I think that was all I had to say. Uh, I am going to turn to the comments. I am so happy to see people here. Hey, Karen. I was talking about you a little bit ago. Um, I have green olives or hard-boiled eggs. When I have cravings, don't give... Okay, cravings. Thank you, Karen. This is going to sound harsh. And it is. It's a little bit of tough love. And I'm talking to myself now. Remember, I had to learn all this myself. But what do you do when you have a craving? 
First of all, remind yourself that a craving is not a life emergency. Okay? Having a craving is not the same as your hair suddenly catching on fire. You don't have to give in to a craving. You will not die. A craving is all it is. Don't give in to it. Now, there are tricks. If you're craving something sweet, um, there are a lot of people say, as Karen did, you know, some olives, some pickle juice. Sometimes just some water. But how about this? Let's take it a step further. Instead of trying to trick ourselves with our cravings, how about we just tell the cravings to get out of our head? They are cravings. Let's take it to an extreme. You find your life partner has stepped out on you. And you confront your life partner. What? How could you have done that? I really craved it. I had a craving. That would not go over so well. You know, if your kids skipped school, went to the movies, what were you thinking? I really craved seeing that movie. Get a grip. Plow through the craving. And eventually you forget that you had it. But anyway, that does sound a little harsh. It is a little harsh. But we are adults. It's, it's time we start treating ourselves that way. You gotta have some skin in this game. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Tanya Elliott writes, I'm craving a life partner. Oh, I'm good. Cool beer, Jaggy? I hope I'm pronouncing that great. Love it. Exactly what I needed to hear. Don't fuel the cravings. Yeah, if you, if you find a trick to, because you know what you're doing? Then you're eating. And it could be just pickle juice. But let's quit using food if we're not hungry for anything. Okay? Jennifer Reeson writes, turning 46 tomorrow, down 79 pounds. I feel better than since my 20s. Keto for life, absolutely. I feel better than I did in my 20s. Because I was eating crap in my 20s in college. I just was in my 20s. And so it didn't matter so much. You know, I was okay. Hey, Crystal. Crystal's done great. Crystal, uh, all, also, uh, last thing for Patreon, there is a patron-only forum, which, as I've said many times, is like Facebook only. It doesn't suck. And we are getting to know each other's stories. There are many categories. A lot of the stories have nothing to do with food. We've just started a recommended reading list. People are snapping photos of, of the places they love to read a book, and here's the book they love to read. Um, here's my non-scale victory. Kimmy from Germany, a picture of herself doing planks. Motivational tools that people use. Um, photos of our pets. Recipes. Food porn. Hey, Patricia. Hi, Kim. I was just talking about you, Kimmy from Germany. She's a patron. Oh, how nice. Okay, mini in a Ina huaso, ina huaso, ina huaso. Today is carnitas with avocado. You know, there are some delicious Latin dishes. When you think about it, cultural food is very much the same, culture to culture. You think you can't do it because you're Latina. You think you can't do it because you're Italian. You think you can't do it because you're raised in a Jewish household. You think you can't do it because you're from the South. Every culture is full of carbs, except for the Inuit and the Maasai. Um, we can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I was raised on bunny bread, which is perfectly square, perfectly white bread. Not raised on, it's not like all we ate. But when my father was making the food, it was white bread, 
margarine and sugar sandwiches. One of my earliest memories is walking around the house. I was a little tiny thing, and I was the sixth of seven children, the first girl, with a bag of Oreos under my little arm. We were all raised on carbs. If I can do this, you can do this. And I'm not going to say it again because I'm going to start crying. So, I'm not going to say it again. So, just repeat in your head what I just said. Everyone can do it. Oh, by the way, people say, I, I've heard that if you have Hashimoto's, you can't do this. I've heard if you don't have a gallbladder, you can't do it. I've heard that if you are postmenopausal, you can't do it. I've heard if you don't have a uterus, you can't do it. You know what? I don't have a uterus. Lost it to cancer when I was 30. I started this when I was postmenopausal. A woman in our group, I don't think she's here today, Vicki, said, you know what? You tell them for me. I'm in my 60s. I have Hashimoto's. I have no gallbladder. And she's lost 57 pounds in a year. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, Crystal Cole Penny writes, Pinterest is great. Also check out Linda's Low Carb website. I highly recommend Linda's Low Carb. I still refer to it. That's where I've gotten most of the recipes. And if you go to Linda's Low Carb, it's very old school, very low tech. The recipes that are marked with an asterisk refer back to old school Atkins and the asterisk indicates induction friendly. Essentially, the ketogenic diet is the induction period of Atkins. You just never go out of induction. Mimi in a huaso, in a huaso, Mexican, be like, no tortillas, no bread, no rice. Yep. Yep. And we go to our favorite Mexican restaurant. They don't even blink at us. Get the meals, ask for no rice, no beans, extra pica de gallo, an ensalada, no chips. One place, they'll bring us uh, pork rinds for the salsa. Raised on Kraft Dinner with peanut butter. There you go. Tanya Elliott, Keto for Life, down 86 pounds in a year, feeling awesome. Congratulations. That is fantastic. You know, the... Keep it... Oh, another thing that came out of the a live stream on Patreon... People say, I'm in a stall. I'm stuck. I'm in a stall. For one thing, a, a stall is not when you go for a week without losing any weight. One of the patrons used the word hovering. I've been hovering at the same weight for however long it was. Finally, you know, shifted two pounds down. Love that. And I told her, I'm going to totally steal it and claim it as my own. Don't use the word stall, which is very negative. Use the word hover which indicates a pause in movement. You're hovering, you're hovering, you're hovering, and then you're going to go, yeah. So, you know, I lost 47 pounds the first year. That's less than a pound a week on average. Gradual. And then it, and it took two more years to, to lose the next 50. That's way less than a pound a week. Oh, nice. Veronica Romaine writes, they bring us a bowl now for our pork rinds. That's nice. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for those kind words. All right. Does anyone have anything specifically they would like to ask or comment, feedback, suggestions? You may ask me, me anything about my personal life. I simply may decline to answer certain things, but you are certainly welcome to ask me. Um, Sandy Cadets, um, do you have suggestions? I've lost 20 pounds, seven weeks in, and started meal prep today to push the belly fat as I lost everywhere but thigh, spare tire all around. Nope. You're going to lose fat. Where are you going to lose fat? No rhyme or reason. Can I tell you the first place I lost? Weight was in my tuchus. And I've always had a big tuchus. Always. Even when I was younger and not overweight. Now I have no ass at all. So, no, you're just going to lose where you lose. You can tone up your muscles underneath there. The plank is very good for that. But that's not going to burn belly fat. You're just, you know, you're building up your inner core.
core. No, just keep going. Congratulations, though, on the seven, on the 20 pounds. That's wonderful. Um, oh, Janet Riddle, I only lost four pounds in a month. Is that okay? Janet, did you not just hear what I just said about my experience? Four pounds in a month? And don't say only. We're going to eliminate that word. You're just going to say, I lost four pounds in a month. Great. Would, if it was reversed, would you say, I only put on four pounds in a month? No, you'd be devastated. That's a pound a week. And I just told you my story. The first year I lost, on average, less than a pound a week. Misty Sweeney. A tukas. Tukas is a Yiddish word for your back end. For your, for your, for your backside. Um, Kili Machorkowski Bowers. Why do I bloat after eating veggies and salad? Maybe your body's telling you it doesn't want them or need them. I eat vegetables are not required. If you like them and want to eat them, hold them to about a cup of non-starchy vegetables pre-cooked a day and about two cups of leafy greens a day or less. If, if your body's bloating, maybe vegetables are not your food. Janet Hydril says, I see inches melting. Your body composition can change without anything happening on the scale. It is a thing. I promise you. The popo. Kimmy writes. Okay, I'm just starting keto. I'm confused when they say no sugar. If there's no sugar added, but only in the nutritional facts, maybe one to two grams, is that okay? You know, this is another thing. I wish they would say stop talking about sugar because people just identify that with added sugar. Carbs are sugar. As far as your liver is concerned, by the time carbs are processed, it all comes out as simple sugar. Whether it's a bran muffin, a sweet potato, a bowl of rice, it's sugar as far as your body. It comes out as glucose, which is sugar. So, no, I wouldn't, I would look, if you're looking at packaged foods, just look at the carb count. I don't even look at the sugar count, the grams of sugar. People focus on that. I don't. Because things can have no grams of sugar and be full of carbs. So look at the carb count. Okie dokie. I don't know how to get back up. I can't see back up on comments. I apologize. Jude, thank you. That's why I'm a patron. Thank you, Jude. Okay, fist sizes. Yeah, about the size of your fist, which is about a cup, more or less. But that's, you don't even need, you don't need to buy anything to be successful at keto. You don't have to buy testing implements. I use them, use them particularly in the beginning to learn because I was interested. Um, I like the Keto Mojo a blood meter. I like, I like Dorian, the owner. I've met him. He's cool. If you go to my blog, caseydurango.com, in the sidebar, you can get a 15% discount if you use that link. Um, and I do get a referral on it. It's a tacky affiliate link, but you can get 15% off a new kit. But you don't even need that. You don't need to test. You don't need, you certainly don't need kits. You don't need to buy meal plans. You don't need to buy powders or special supplements or special keto coffee. Yeah, don't even need a measuring cup. If you're going to eat vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, about the size of your fist, not a fistful, about the size of a fist, and about the size of two fists of leafy greens. Cat Black wrote, you don't need all that, Rose, but I don't know what Rose was saying. There is a, the, the list I followed, 
you can go to my blog and it's in the resources. Meal planning, I mean. I like making fresh every day if I can. You know, people are really different on that. It's interesting. Some people don't want to, you know, they, they're really busy lives. They don't want to cook every day, so they meal prep, get things portioned in the freezer, in the fridge, all in out for the week or for a few days, and they like that. Some people say, no, I like to cook every day fresh, and that way I make one portion at a time, and I don't have extra food laying around. Find what works for you. We are all different. That's kind of the thing. Do what works for you. You don't need anything but healthy fats, fatty meals, and some non-starchy veggies. That's it. Do you fast? If so, what kind? I have opinions about so-called fasting. Intermittent fasting, I don't think that word means what people think it means because you are eating. And so you're not fasting. Feeding windows, I don't agree with. For me. And I don't fast. I, I don't. People fast, when people fast for spiritual, discipline reasons, religious reasons, absolutely, cultural reasons. And, and if I'm going to not eat, it's going to be for a reason, not for weight loss. If I want to give up a day of food for contribute for world hunger, you know, that's one thing. But to say a feeding window, I'm not going to eat except between, and let me tell you what, saying my feeding window is 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., that's just getting a late start. And you can cram a lot of eating in those hours. But I do not believe in arbitrarily not eating if you're truly hungry any more than I believe in arbitrarily eating either because it's breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time, or because an app told me to. If I deprived myself, so if I say, let me, let's make it a, a more of a, a small eating, feeding window. I'm not going to eat except between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. If I wake up early, if I wake up at all, and I am actually flat out empty and hungry, which sometimes happens, and I've said I'm not going to eat until 1 o'clock, all I'm going to do is think about food all morning until 1 o'clock. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm sick and tired of thinking about food. My best-selling t-shirt, food is not the boss of me. Food is not the boss of me anymore, and I don't want it to be. What is my favorite meal? It changes. Some days I want nothing more than a thick bacon cheeseburger wrapped in cabbage leaves the way my husband does it with some mayonnaise and everything's running down my arms. We just sit there and just really enjoy it. Some days I want to go to our favorite Mexican restaurant and get the, um, what's the new dish we've just gotten? It's seafood. Oh, so good. And cheese sauce. Um, some days, there's nothing better than a ribeye. Mm. Some days, I, I just eat deconstructed deviled eggs. I get some boiled eggs, mash them up with some mayonnaise and some mustard in a bowl and just eat them that way. Uh, hey, Lisa. Yesterday, we were at the store and hubby spotted keto, keto coffee and tried to show me. I looked at him and told him, I don't need that crap. <laughs> <coughs> LOL. And then the thing went off the screen, so I apologize. I can't read. What do you think of a juice cleanse? For one thing, what kind of juice? Juice? If you're talking about, no. Cleanse? No. And we did juicing. You know, we watched Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead before we did keto. Got the highest end, fanciest masticating juicer we got. We did juice for a while, but no. You want to be cleansed? Don't eat if you're not hungry. Your body will cleanse itself. It knows what to do. Someone asked, what is a patron? Go to Casey Dr Oh, thank you. It's, if you actually, if you go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash go keto with Casey, 
it is where people generously pledge anything from two dollars up and for the different things there are kind of rewards that you get different access it's where I spend most of my time as a matter of fact I I'm a, I, I deal with my patrons every single day plus there is a forum yes it does not oh thank you Karen she just gave them okay any other okay is is it okay to drink low carb whey protein shakes you know, do what you want to do. Why are you drinking protein shakes? If it's because there's absolutely no way you're going to eat food? Okay. Um, but we're not chasing protein here. Better to eat food. And it's just as easy to keep a, a, a few boiled eggs in the fridge and, and eat two or three of those to get some protein as it is to go to the chocolate and make a shake. But do what you want. Okay, Jackie <coughs> Holmes says, I bought a juicer after that movie too. All right. Um, <coughs> I was sick last week. My patrons know that. <coughs> I'm having some residual. <laughs> congestion. So I'm going to close now before I start coughing. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you for participating. Congratulations to those of you who have had such wonderful successes. And keep it up. If you're, if you're not finding the success you expected, but you're finding some success, keep at it. If you're hovering, at a certain weight, keep at it. Now, if you're putting on weight, and I don't, I don't, I don't mean fluctuations. We're going to fluctuate. You know, you can fluctuate five pounds. It doesn't mean a great deal. Up. If you, you know, if you're fluctuating ten pounds, that means you're probably eating, just either not eating. You know, you're not eating the, the ketogenic way. Or you're just eating too much food. You can be in ketosis, eating nothing but strictly ketogenic foods, and eat way too much. Which is where the don't eat if you're not hungry part comes in. Your body knows. If we would just listen. Okay, guys. Thank you very, very much. And I will see you hopefully next week. I don't do these every week. I... Um, I try to do them because, as I said, I feel like I feel like um, giving back, and I think that's the right thing to do. It's actually part of my mission statement. You know, that's a good exercise. Write a mission statement for yourself, for your life. You know, businesses do that. Write a mission statement for your life. You don't have to share it with anyone if you don't want, but put it somewhere that you can see it often. You know, if it's a drawer, you open a lot, and it's right there. Stick it on your bathroom mirror. Figure out your mission in life. FYI, don't make it about making money. Make it about doing good. Lecture over. TTFN.